G'day, welcome to Down in the Woodworks. Have you ever had a project that's basically just for fun, more of an experimental piece, not really sure what to expect, but then the end result just blows your mind and uh, exceeds all of your expectations? This project started with an idea in my head and a hand-drawn sketch. I then replicated that sketch, again hand-drawn, into full size using cardboard to get an idea of the true size and shape. Once I was happy with them, I used them as templates to trace and cut out the shapes from 17mm construction grade ply I picked up from a council chuck out. The ply was perfect because I wanted the bike to have a bit of a raw look anyway. The rear frame was made up of two pieces, each one made of two layers of ply laminated together. I cut out one of the layers and refined the shape by hand. Once I was happy with it, I used it as a template to shape the other three using a flush trim bit in the router table. The edges on the outside faces of each layer were rounded over with a half inch round over bit. Next I had to make the steel mounts for the rear wheel. Again, I hand drew a few designs settling on this one. I cut out the mounting brackets from 5mm steel brackets I bought from the hardware store. The axle brackets needed to be inset into one of the halves of each side so that the two layers forming each side could be laminated together. I set the depth of the router bit straight from the bracket and cut the insets by hand. I don't show it here but I tack welded the two brackets together and then finished shaping them as one and drilled the mounting holes in both because they needed to be identical to each other to eliminate any alignment issues with the back wheel. With the two brackets still tacked together, I placed them in their final position in one of the inset layers from one side of the bike and drilled the mounting holes through. I then took the opposing half from the other side of the bike and lined the two up to extend the mounting holes all the way through that side. This would ensure the two brackets lined up exactly. Then it was just a matter of putting the two layers from side A together and from side B together and drilling the mounting holes all the way through. Now the two rear frame sections could be glued together. I then started on the main frame and this was basically the same process. But first I had to route out a relief for the front gooseneck mount. I cut the gooseneck from the bike with some of the tubes still attached and then just flattened them to give me a mounting surface that could be epoxied and bolted into the ply frame.
The sheets of ply I had weren't big enough to make the frame halves in one piece, so I laminated smaller pieces together, ensuring that all the joints were staggered. When the frame was almost complete, I decided the shape needed further refining, so I used a thin strip of timber to form smooth curves and act as a guide for a flush trim bit in the router. Jumping forward to the completed frame now, and all the edges were rounded over with a half inch round over bit. For the forks I used 28mm dowel, but a short length at the top needed to be 25mm to fit into the fork mounting bracket, also from the donor bike. But I don't have a lathe, so I came up with this setup here to use the router table and a straight bit to turn the ends down to size. This worked really well. So I've just assembled the gooseneck and the uh, fork mount and handlebar mount all together in the bike just to work out what I'm going to do with these um, dowels that are acting as the forks. Now the dowels are going to slip up between these holes here, the two of them. I want them to come right up to this height here. So looking at it closely, this is the standard assembly that came off the bike and it's just got these three packers because the, um, the fork neck is a bit too long. So what I was thinking, I can replace those two with a piece of ply and uh, make some sort of just a flat bracket. It doesn't have to be real big. It only has to be maybe slightly bigger than that sitting up here. And then I could bring the, fork, the top of the forks all the way up to there. So thinking about that, um, I already put something together. So if you look at that, basically I just uh, traced the bottom of the fork mount onto a bit of ply, draw a hole in the center with my forstner bit, it's about 30 millimeters and um, it actually fits really well. I'll, uh, I'll put it on and I'll show you what it looks like. So I've got that board in place now and uh, apart from cutting it to shape, it looks like it's gonna work out exactly as I want. So I've got the forks in place as well. Uh, these will get trimmed off to length so that this lip here sits hard up against that metal uh, bracket there and uh, underneath here I'll do a very shallow recess into that board with a forstner bit so that um, they get seated on there and that'll also give me a center drill or a center point so I can drill in and um, run a screw or a bolt in from the top just to fix them in place. I think that's going to work out just perfect. For the front wheel mounts, I cut off the ends of the steel bike forks from the donor bike, which were the perfect size for the 28mm dowel. These were then just bolted to the ends of the dowels. With the front wheel mounts in place, I assembled the forks to the front wheel and the fork bracket, 
and then after squaring it all up, making sure the alignment was right, I could drill the holes through the forks for the bolts. At this stage I put the bike together to see how it looked and I loved it. The only thing I wanted to change was the rear frames. I felt there was too much timber there, so I cut out the middle rib. Next I drilled out a long narrow mortise in the main frame for the steel flat bar that was the seat post. You'll notice here I originally made the frame connecting spaces out of ply, but I changed those to 28mm dowel, which looked much better. To find the location for the pedal mount, I took a line from the centre of the rear cog and through the centre of the top and middle frame connector bolts which gave me the position for the center of the pedal crank. I used a guide to drill a half circle on the front edge of the frame with a hole saw, and then used a Forstner bit to drill the holes for the original mounting hardware that came off the donor bike. The last thing to make was the handlebars which were also made from 28mm dowel. I made up a very simple jig on my cross-cut sled to cut the ends of the dowels at 15 degrees. And using this jig, I was also able to mark the centre line through the cuts which would be used as reference lines for other cuts. I needed a way to join these dowels together that would also look the part, so I decided to spline them together with web-shaped splines made from 12mm ply. I cut the slots in the ends of the dowels with another simple jig and a 12mm straight bit in the router. Because I didn't actually have any 12mm ply, I laminated two pieces of 6mm together for each spline. Once they were dry, I used this same template to get a nice curve on them and trim them on the router table. Then it was time to glue the handlebars together. I left the splines a little wider on the outside so they could be shaped and flushed by hand. As I said before, I wanted these splines to look the part, so I drilled a few holes of different sizes in them. I first drilled pilot holes, then drilled the final size hole from both sides to eliminate any tear out.
With the addition of some chrome dome nuts, the handlebars turned out way cool. Damn. Well, I have to say, I haven't been this excited about a project while I was building the bike uh, for a very long time. Uh, it was just, it was just good to experiment a bit and have some fun. Uh, I every time I thought about the project, it brought a smile to my face, and uh, it still makes me smile every time I look at it. It's just, um, I love it. I recommend to anybody to uh, just go and do something crazy like that. Crazy because. Um, it's probably took a lot of my time and it's not very useful, but that doesn't matter because uh, I enjoyed it so much. It uh, yeah, really just inspired me. Um, the bikes, like I said, it's not practical. It's not built for everyday riding. To be honest, it's more of a showpiece, more art sculpture than uh, you know a bike. But uh, yeah, it uh, just turned out fantastic. I love it. Everybody that sees it loves it. And um, yeah, I'm so glad I did it. Uh, only problem now is uh, to work out what I'm going to do with it. But I think I'll hang on to it for a while because like I said, it brings a smile to my face every time I look at it. So if it's here in the workshop uh, keeping me inspired, then that's a good thing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video and watched right through to the end here. And hopefully I've inspired you a little bit too. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you want to keep up with what I'm doing in between videos, you can follow me on Instagram. But in the meantime, until the next one, you guys have a great day.